Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Google Education Search Analysis, our quarterly review of emerging higher education search trends. Um, our goal today is to provide you with insights into the zeitgeist to prospective students, as well as ideas for where to double down and where to find pockets of efficiencies and opportunities in your search and overall marketing efforts. So my name is Jen Howard. I'm the Industry Director for Education um, here at Google. And here with me today, I have three fabulous um, education um, search experts with us as well. So first, I have Rachel Myers, who joins us every quarter, um, who is in charge of strategy and operations for education here, and really is our data maven, and understands the insights of the data better than anybody. Um, also joining me today for the first time is Katie McGlynn, who is one of our heads of industry on education, and she is our search marketing expert. And then last but not least, Shannon Snow, who's also one of our heads of industry here on education, and she is our mobile marketing expert. So welcome, ladies, to the Hangout. Um, so in the next hour, um, we will all walk through um, our ESA presentation. I'll share the overarching trends. Rachel will share with you the auction dynamics. And then um, Katie and Shannon will both share some thoughts from a marketing perspective on what this data actually means um, in both search and mobile. And then, of course, at the end, we'll take questions um, from the Google Plus audience. So a quick note on the methodology for our um, presentation. The data now analyzes the search volume and auction dynamics on Google.com using a robust custom list of education queries um, that we've been analyzing over the past several of years. Um, most of the data that you see today will include desktop, tablet, and mobile search volume. Um, so that's the, the setup for the analyses. A few notes on the logistics before we get into the actual data itself. Um, if you are watching this live from Google+, you can ask questions via the Q&A app. Um, you may need to click on it if you don't currently see it. Um, a recording of this Hangout on Air will be available on the same page you're watching it from at the conclusion of the event, so you will have access to all the data in the slides. And um, if you do work directly with my team, we'll be following up with you over the next couple of weeks to discuss account-specific insights um, and potential action items as a result of the analysis. So um, with that, we are going to dig into Q2 2014. So the state of the industry as seen through the eyes of Google.com. So um, if we look at how the quarter performed, looking back at the past year, um, if you've been following, um, we've seen the growth for the education search queries um, remain relatively flat um, and slowly um, be declining. So from 4% you know, year over year just a year ago into a very, very flat in Q1. So the news for Q2 is that for the first time since 2012, um, queries are actually down. So that we've seen a decline in the demand for education. Not very down, only down 1%, um, but um, it is the first time we've seen a, de a decline in some time. So um, there are many factors that obviously influence this demand, and so we're going to talk a lot about kind of how this break down, breaks down. Um, and we will take a look at in depth at which queries are driving this and really driving this change. So the first segment that we always look at when looking at the change um, has to do with brand terms. So these are queries that actually include the name of the school. So overall, EDU brands are down 1% year over year. So very consistent with the overall trend um, and very much a driver of the overall trend. So it's really important to understand why these terms influence the overall number so greatly. And the reason is because when we look at the, um, the overall universe of queries and the, the terms that we actually analyze, we can't look at every single long tail term that we look at in education. So we, our list, while robust and includes thousands and thousands of keywords, um, really focuses on the head terms as it relates to programs um, um, more general terms, degrees, and certainly education brands. Education brands continue to be a very high volume. And so when they decline, it does contribute significantly to the overall um, landscape. And so we are going to take a look at how it breaks down by brand type. 
but we did think it was important to note that the brands are down with the overall number. We'll see there's a lot of pockets of other areas where there's an increase. But first, the brands overall. So when we look at the brands, um, we categorize them in, across um, three types of schools. So we have the traditional schools, um, the campus and university systems, community college, and then um, career educators. And so um, you can see the traditional schools um, do continue to increase slightly, 1% year over year. Um, and you can also see by the size of the pie, it is the share of the search traffic. So they make up um, a much larger share of the queries, and they are continuing to grow. So that's one um, important trend for us to be paying close attention to as uh, more and more students are looking at um, different types of um, educational options that are available to them online. Um, you may also remember that we shared um, that community colleges were growing last quarter um, and that career educators were the only ones in decline. As you can see this quarter, um, we've seen a shift. So both community colleges and career educators um, have been declining. Um, so it's also something important for us to know. Now, it's also important to know that not all brands across these categories are following the same trends as the overall aggregate. And so um, the, uh, the very specific account teams um, have the information as it relates to specific brands. And we can share with you how your brand is stacking up you know, last quarter as well as you know, the past few quarters. Um, and so that way, um, you, that way um, you have a sense on how you stack up. And your account teams will also be able to give you some ideas on what you can do to try to change the trajectory if you are one of the brands that's in decline. Um, but as we know, search does extend beyond just brands. Um, so let's take a look at how it um, breaks down across other education categories. So EDU non-brand is increasing 1% year over year. So these are terms that are uh, more related to um, program, degree, and also um, the generalized terms. So let's take a look at how that breaks down across those three categories. The, um, the order that this is in on the screen, the program to general to degree, um, they are ordered in terms of query volume, so you can understand the sheer size of the way, um, you know, the volume of the queries that are actually coming in. Um, and then you can see the percentages you're looking at are the year over year um, numbers as it relates to Q2 over Q2. So program terms, um, the largest um, segment um, growing 4% year over year. Um, and then the general terms, the medium segment, um, flat. Um, and still remaining um, relatively healthy. And then degree terms, and degrees are what someone that's specifically looking for bachelor's, associate, PhD, et cetera, um, is increasing 6% year over year. So um, we'll dive deeper into these categories to see what was driving the growth within each one. Um, but right now, I'm going to kick it over to Rachel Myers, who's going to talk about the auction dynamics and what that really means for advertisers in Q2. Thanks, Jen. So I'm going to be discussing some of our auction insights and the auction dynamics that we saw within Q2. Just as we use query volume as a proxy for demand, we'll look at three metrics that together we can use as a proxy for advertising opportunity to help you understand where you need to double down to stay competitive and where to look for pockets of efficiency. So overall, auction dynamics were ideal for advertisers in Q2. You may recall that in Q1 of 2014, we shared that clicks grew by 9% for the first time in a long time. And Q2 actually continued that trend and accelerated that trend. You'll see that clicks grew 19% year over year in Q2 of this year. Though there are many factors that can influence an increase like this, we hypothesize that the increase is a reflection of advertisers' focus on relevancy. By this we mean that advertisers are doing a better job of providing the searchers what they were looking for in the first place. In terms of competitiveness of the auction, we saw a decrease in the number of ads per query, so that's that first bar, on Google.com. It was down by 6%. With a less cluttered ad space, competition to capture clicks was certainly less challenging than in previous quarters. Lastly, CPC prices, or cost per click prices, actually decreased by 1% in Q2. You may remember we saw consistent increases in CPC price in 2013. Advertisers are probably happy to hear that CPC 
prices have stabilized in the first half of 2014. Now these numbers represent both the brand and non-brand terms within EDU. So let's take a look at some, uh, some categories where we saw greater efficiency within the auction. Uh, the first one that we wanted to cover was the geo category. So geo terms include search queries that contain a geo modifier. Examples include colleges in, in Chicago or universities in California. Geo terms actually receive the most efficient performance in Q2 of any of our uh, of any of our categories. With CPC prices remaining flat for geo terms, so that's that middle uh, those middle bars. Ads per query is actually uh, drastically decreasing. We saw a 13% decrease in ads per query, or the competitiveness on, the, on those queries. And clicks increased by 11%. Geo saw great performance within Q2. Another area that we wanted to focus on, another noteworthy area, is uh, in online terms. And so these are search queries like online college on, or online universities. These also saw very good performance, and DPCs did increase by 4%. Clicks actually accelerated much faster than the overall EDU average. So overall EDU average was at 19%. The clicks for online, uh, online terms in Q2 grew at 29% year over year. Now I'm going to kick it back to Jen to discuss some of the emerging trends that we saw in Q2. Great. Thanks, Rachel. So um, the emerging trend section is really the, um, the insights that you know, do change every quarter um, as we identify um, things that are um, happening in Q2 um, that we may have not seen before or that we see changing or accelerating um, in Q2. And so the first thing that we will take a look at um, is the, um, the areas um, on a particular little device that could. So we've been talking a lot about mobile over the past, um, you know, several years actually, um, and the growth continues in Q2. So what we really wanted to highlight is that in terms of um, education-related terms, we do see them growing in Q2 23% year over year. Um, this is the same growth rate that we reported in Q1, um, which shows us that the momentum for mobile searches is not slowing. It does continue to rise, and um, there's still a lot of opportunity um, to be capturing um, attention from your prospective students on the mobile device. Um, we also wanted to break this down a little bit for you and take a look at um, the categories within a mobile and how those are trending as well. And so the graph that you're seeing um, is the, um, the four types of terms that we evaluate, um, just as we did in the kind of the overarching um, trends. And um, it does mirror what we're seeing um, on the on desktop and tablet as well. But what's interesting is to see the very strong growth for degrees and programs. And so um, the way that these are ranked on the page um, are in terms of the the year over year growth, and then also and it does mirror what we saw um, in the overall trends. And so the insight here, and Shannon will talk a lot more about this later when we're talking about the insights for the marketers, is that it does reflect um, the behavior we're seeing as prospective students are using a mobile device kind of earlier in their cycle when they're considering um, which schools to go to, and that the areas in degree and program are growing more rapidly than um, some of the more lower funnel terms. So Shannon will talk about that later and give you some insights on how to capitalize on this trend. Um, the next trend is speak with my online associate. So today, students have many choices when it comes to education. And one of the biggest choices is whether to take a class online or at a campus. And so this quarter, we wanted to understand where the demand was coming from and where uh, we were growing faster as it related to online options. So um, we identified four categories in our research um, where the option to pursue these particular areas online is growing faster than their non-online counterparts. So to put a finer point on this, if you look at the very top of the screen, associate degrees themselves are growing 10% um, year over year. If, when modified with associate's degrees online, they're growing 22% year over year. 
And so the same is true with certificates growing faster, tech programs growing faster, and health care programs um, growing faster online. We do think it's particularly interesting that associate's degree and certificates in particular are um, typically shorter, um, shorter programs where people can complete these degrees and certificate programs um, more quickly. And so combining that with the ability to do it online might be indicating um, a student's urgency um, to really get, get moving forward, not only with education, but hopefully you know, whatever they're pursuing once they complete. So these are the areas where we're seeing um, a significant difference in online versus on, um, online versus not online. So Ohio. So we've been calling this section um, the state of mind um, over the past couple of quarters as we've really tried to identify um, changes in geographic trends. Um, and this quarter, as you might imagine, it's all about Ohio. And so um, what you're looking at here are the top 10 states that are searched along with an education term. So this could be you know, colleges in Ohio, or this could be um, universities in New York, for instance. Um, what this does not include are specific names of universities. So Ohio State, for instance, would not be included in this analysis. But what you're seeing is um, the way that these terms, the way the states are ranked on the right hand side of the page are um, the highest volume of queries that we're seeing. So Ohio is the highest volume compared to Texas, but these are still the top 10. Um, the percentages you're looking at are of the year over year growth, Q2 2014 over Q2 2013. So the interesting thing here about Ohio is not only is it in the highest demand, um, but it was also pretty high last year <laughs> because it's already, um, it was already at a pretty high level. So, the, um, so for any schools that have programs or thinking about adding programs or who have online programs and maybe don't have as many students as um, you'd like um, coming out of um, Midwest areas, Ohio is something um, that we certainly should be looking into. Um, New York and um, New York being the second highest, growing really, really quickly, um, and then California being the second fastest grower um, at 12%. So while these states um, do consistently see a high volume, um, they are growing um, significantly. Um, the red dots in West Virginia, Indiana, and Colorado are the decliners. And so while these states still make the top 10, um, there does seem to be a little bit of a shift. So um, good insights as it relates to schools who have campuses in any of these areas or who have online programs and could amplify their marketing efforts in those particular geographies. So get with the program. So um, as you saw in kind of the overarching trends of this quarter and as we've been talking about over the last couple of quarters, um, program terms um, continue to be um, not only high volume, but um, continue, to continue to see some growth. So um, what we're going to take a look at are the, the programs and um, their popularity and the changes that we're seeing in Q2 specifically. So again, the, um, the stack ranking on the page is the volume of queries that we see for those particular programs. Um, and the green um, bar is the year-over-year um, -year growth that we're seeing just for Q2. So the story here, again, um, this is two quarters in a row, is cosmetology. <laughs> and so um, we've done a little bit of um, digging you know, to try to understand you know, what the draw is in cosmetology. I think there's a couple of things to consider. One being what we talked about earlier in terms of the, um, the speed to completion. Um, you can actually get through these programs relatively quickly and be um, you know, diving into your career. There's also an element of entrepreneurship um, that's becoming more and more attractive where um, once you have these types of um, certification, then you can um, actually um, start your own business um, with um, less of a barrier to entry than maybe some other areas. So cosmetology continues to be on the rise. Um, very, very similar to culinary and hospitality. So two of our fastest growers. Now, we should not um, overshadow at all the healthcare and nursing industries. Um, they do continue to be high volume and do continue to grow just not as fast as we're seeing with some of these, um, these two other areas. But worth noting, healthcare and nursing is still hot, um, while we do, are seeing some emerging trends elsewhere. Um, now, in terms of the decliners and where we're seeing less interest, um, these are relatively consistent over what we've seen over the last quarters as well. So art and design, 
criminal justice and auto um, continually declining. Um, and then education for the first time declining only 1%, but worth noting um, that education um, saw less demand in Q2 than we've seen um, before as well. So from a program specifics um, perspective, um, schools that have um, programs that are being offered in any of these areas, um, good insights in terms of um, demand or lack thereof and what we need to be thinking about when creating demand for those types of programs. So, um, last but not least, we are going to call it a comeback. So, for those of you that have been following this report over um, you know, for some time, you know, may remember that for the longest time, um, the MBA was um, by far the most popular um, degree type um, on Google.com. And last quarter, for the very first time in Q1, that is. We saw, um, we saw bachelor's degrees um, take over a little bit, but that in Q2, our good friend the MBA has come back and um, it is back on top. <laughs> and so, so there was a small hiatus there where the bachelor's degree was, um, was below, but you can see the growth in the MBA terms um, has returned. Um, and it doesn't come as much of a surprise to us. It was actually more surprising, and that's why we shared it last quarter, and that it had actually declined a slight bit. Um, but the number of applications for full-time um, two-year MBAs rose um, by nearly 12% for the class that started school this year. So the fact that it's on the, um, the rise um, both in the, you know, the um, digital universe as well as um, real life um, follows um, quite nicely. So MBAs are back um, in case anybody was worried. Um, so looking at the other um, degree types, um, we can see that you know MBAs are back and continue to grow. Um, bachelor's degrees, um, and then followed very closely by um, PhDs. So um, still on the rise. And so um, really, the um, the thing to be thinking about here is that what we've seen is that you know MBAs, bachelor's, PhDs continue to grow. High demand. What people are being really specific about what they're looking for. Um, and then associates and certificates growing, but as we noted, maybe in the online world. So there's um, differences in the way that we should be thinking about our offerings as well as the way that we're going to market. So that brings us um, to the end of um, our remarks on the, on the data itself. So if you remember only two things from this whole presentation, um, the first thing we'd like you to remember is um, that specificity is key. Um, you know, currently, we are seeing growth in the longer tail, more specific searches like programs and like degrees. And I think we all can attest to the fact that our searches have become our, search, our searches have become longer and more specific in the past few years. So the trend has affected um, education as well, um, as well as you know overall in search activity in general. And the students know what type of educational institution they're looking for, what type of experience they're looking for, and now they're looking um, very, very specifically at programs and degrees and certificates so they can narrow down what school might be right for them. So um, being really specific about what you offer um, and capturing them earlier in the cycle is really going to be important. Um, the second piece is that mobile momentum is now slowing down. So we've been talking about mobile for some time now, and it's still evolving and affecting the way that people search. Um, growing consistently in the double digits across the first half of 2014, um, not just in, again, the overall mobile universe, but in education as well. Um, and it does follow that the behavior we're seeing on the mobile device is also moving prospective students' behavior a more up funnel as they begin their research process, beginning it with their mobile device. So this concludes the, um, the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, please continue to enter them into the app. We will come back to those questions. But in the meantime, I'm going to kick it over to Katie McGlynn, our search marketing expert, um, and Shannon Snow, our mobile marketing expert, um, to share their perspective on these trends and their recommendations for education marketing. Great. So thanks, Jen and Rachel, for sharing these Q2 trends with the group. It's really interesting to see that while search volume in aggregate did not increase year, or year over year, there are pockets of growth that marketers can plan around. So the insights that really resonated the most with me is that non-branded search is really the key opportunity to capturing growth here. Marketers really need to think about how their potential students are searching and need to double down on program degree and geo-focused terms 
that saw growth in Q2. Since capturing these searches, um, there is it's more important than ever. Um, and I thought it might actually be interesting to share some trends that we've seen around seasonality. So historically, we've seen a sizable uptick in search volume for the back to school season, beginning the week of July 28th and continuing throughout the month of September. In 2013, we saw a 31% increase uh, in search for EDU terms. And for non-branded terms, we saw a 29% uptick over the course of that same period. So really, the takeaway here, make sure your campaigns and tests are ready and set to go during this seasonal peak time to take advantage of that. How can we as search marketers really think about creating unique winning strategies to take advantage of the search dynamics that are at play? First, work to capture the growing search queries around program, degree, and geo-focused terms. In our annual third-party compete study, we actually found that advertisers see 17 times more clicks when in the first three ad positions. That's a lot of extra clicks, um, which really does have an impact. Um, as we head into peak seasonality, marketers looking to capture clicks and conversions should aim for the top of those pages. Secondly, as we continue to see brand search terms decline, this means that schools need to find ways to create interest and awareness around their brand terms. We recently conducted an internal study and found that advertisers who run video ads on YouTube saw a 12% lift in searches for their brand. We found this to be a successful strategy for those advertisers who have seen a decline in their brand searches over time um, and may be of interest to you as well. And with that, I'm going to kick it over to Shannon to share some additional insights from the mobile perspective. Thanks so much, Katie. So from a mobile's perspective, the biggest takeaway is clearly that the mobile momentum hasn't stopped. Mobile is still growing in the double digits at 23% year over year. The other piece I find really interesting is for a long time people have asked me, what do students and prospective students really want from a mobile site experience? And I think with the recent trends that we're starting to see, they are telling us. Students are using mobile devices to search for degrees and programs and really learn more and get closer to a decision in terms of what they want. So you can really capitalize on this trend by giving the students the information they're looking for regarding these programs and degrees. In terms of what we're going to see in Q3, I think it's pretty similar to what we're going to see in search. Last year, we saw a 40% increase in mobile EDU searches from August to September. So do not forget about mobile when you're planning for back to school. And finally, in terms of advice on how to win in mobile, first, make your mark with your mobile site. The biggest challenge that we see with EDU mobile is poor mobile site experience. Half of education site visitors on mobile have a poor experience. And as a result, 40% actually have a negative perception of the brand, and 35% will actually go to a competitor. So do not let that happen to you. You can do this by putting degree and program information on your mobile EDU landing page to ensure you're giving the students what they're looking for. And if you are going to put a lead form on your mobile website, make sure that you have no more than three pages on that lead form. We found in our research that lead forms that have three pages or less have a 20% higher chance of converting that student on your site. Second, bid to be found. The top mobile ad slot gets 75% of the ad clicks. And we found that the ad slot, going from ad slot two, which is at the top of the mobile page, to ad slot three can actually reduce your CTR or click-through rate by 90%. So make sure you are creating your mobile strategy to allow for you the opportunity to be in those critical top two slots. And the final piece around mobile is measuring the full value. What I find extremely exciting about mobile marketing is that now there's even more options to what a student can do and how they can connect with your school from that mobile landing page. They may choose to learn about a program and actually fill out that lead form directly on the mobile page, but they also may decide to learn about that program and degree and convert later on a desktop. 
or make that call immediately right to that admissions rep. So in order to make sure that your mobile strategy is capturing that full value, it's important to really think about how much you value each of those different types of conversions. And I think that once you take that into account, it can really help you go from a strategy that is not working in mobile to a strategy that is working. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Jen, who's going to take some of the top questions from the Google Plus page. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, OK, so a few questions from the page. Um, the first is regarding Ohio. Um, so there's um, the slide itself shows 0% of the slide. So what is that percentage? So the percentage next to the state um, indicates um, the year-over-year -year growth from Q2 2014, um, you know, Q2 2014 over Q2 2013. So what it means is, is that um, the, the volume was flat year over year by Ohio, um, for Ohio, but Ohio still had the highest number of queries. So that's the um, that's what the zero percent means. Um, it was just flat year over year. Um, the next question is, do we see any correlation between unemployment rates and search volume for education? That's a really good question, and one that we have looked at a lot in the past. For this particular analysis, um, we are focusing only on the Google Trends, and they don't in, does not incorporate any external data around unemployment rates. Um, but it's something that um, we do look at, and um, if we do have something um, compelling to share, um, we will make sure that we can get it out to you um, through account team. Um, the next question is. Are we seeing any specific types of schools where MBA programs are more popular than others? Um, now, we, now, we currently don't look at um, degree trends by school type. Um, that's something we could certainly think about. Um, do you anticipate another increase in CPCs in Q3, or will the trend continue to be flat or decline? Well, um, we cannot share forward-looking trends, so I don't know. <laughs> My crystal ball does not know, but I can tell you historically, um, we do see an uptick in Q3. It's a particularly busy time um, in the industry, um, and so um, we have seen an increase in the past. Um, should geo-specific keyword terms be built out at the state level, or should marketers look to become more granular and use city modifiers as well? Um, we do recommend that marketers build out their coverage on both the state and city level to ensure maximum volume. Um, and certainly it should mirror wherever the, um, the programs are being offered themselves, um, if you do have specific areas that you need to be building up. Um, but of course, um, you should monitor the performance of all the different keyword types and just make sure we're optimizing accordingly. But um, it's better to start broad and to um, tailor back. Um, I think, hold on, is that everything? Yep, and I think those are all the questions we have for now. So, um, so thank you everybody. Thanks for joining us for the Q2 2014 Google Education Search Analysis. Um, we hope um, we gave you some good insights and some ideas on how you can action them. And um, we look forward to seeing um, all of you next quarter. And um, have a great day. Thanks, bye.